The Marvels director Nia DaCosta had a lot to say in a recent interview with Vanity Fair about the upcoming Kevin Feige movie, in her words. And if you're a bit confused about some of the footage on the screen, don't worry. Ghostbusters 2016 and The Marvels, why? They're the same picture. I don't know if I've ever seen an absolutely more disastrous interview prior to a film's release than this one. And of course, it's about a Disney movie. God bless it. Here we go. Well, folks, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment and turn that little red subscribe button to gray. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. It seems another piping hot turd from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is set to plop on theaters in just about two months. This in the way of The Marvels, a movie that absolutely nobody asked for once again and is probably going to be contending with such box office smash hits from the MCU like The Eternals, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and of course, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Can The Marvels actually underperform these three god-awful films? Well, we're going to find out in just a couple of months and signs as of right now are pointing to possibly yes. One of the things that Disney has become famous for, especially with Marvel Studios, is sinking a movie before it ever comes out. At the very best, Disney seems incapable of keeping the mouths shut of their actors, writers, and directors, hell, even Kevin Feige's, before Marvel films come out to keep them from sinking. And of course, at worst, they're actually encouraging it. But the recent interview with Nia DaCosta, the alleged director of the Marvels, it's really Kevin Feige's movie, is a complete horse of a different color. This is a new one, folks, and it is grand. As you can see here from the headline, the Marvel's director would text Shang-Chi's filmmaker on stressful shoot days, sometimes thought on set what I would consider to be one of the most prolific lines ever to describe the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all of the Walt Disney Company. What the hell does any of this shit even mean? Been asking ourselves the same thing? In the interview with Vanity Fair, DaCosta disclosed that she would text or call previous Marvel directors like Taika Waititi, Chloe Zhao, and even James Gunn uh, before accepting the directorship of the Marvels. Are they going to kill me and destroy my soul? Is Kevin Feige a bad man? She asked. And they were like, no, he's just a good guy who's a nerd. And since the dismissal of Ike Perlmutter, who kept him in check, a complete idiot when it comes to money. As Marvel's director Nia DaCosta told Vanity Fair, sometimes you'd be in a scene and you'd be like, what the hell does any of this shit mean? Or an actor's looking at some crazy thing happening in space and they're actually looking at a blue X. They're obviously hard days and days where you're like, this just isn't working. She continued with, quote, I think superhero fatigue absolutely exists, she told Total Film Magazine earlier this year. The biggest difference from other MCU movies to date is that the Marvels is really wacky and silly. Yeah, we we haven't seen that before. <clears throat> While DaCosta tried to bring as much of her voice into the MCU as possible, she still noted to Vanity Fair that, quote, the Marvels is a Kevin Feige production. It's his movie. So I think you live in that reality. But I tried to go in with the knowledge that some of you is going to take a back seat. Well, for Kevin Feige and Disney's sake, I sure hope that backseat wasn't in a bus. Quote, it was really great to play in this world and to be a part of building this big world, she added. But it made me just want to build my own world more. What a ringing endorsement by Nia DaCosta, the director of the Marvels, to go see this film. And of course, the Marvels is set to open in theaters on November. Who gives a f*** from Disney?
But wait, there's more. During that interview, Nia DaCosta also had a few other choice words that got her in a bit of hot water. As if it wasn't bad enough with Nia DaCosta's ringing endorsement to go see the Marvels, she also made sure that Vanity Fair knew that, quote, the thing that I've been most surprised by lately is how much respect I'm getting from these middle-aged white dudes that I work with. Now, of course, Ms. DaCosta and many of the left-wing leaning outlets out there were a bit surprised at some of the backlash she got for that prejudiced remark against middle-aged white men. I mean, it's not at all like saying, gee, I'm so glad when I was walking down the street last night that I didn't get mugged by that 18-year-old black kid. See, folks, both comments are prejudiced and stupid, but the problem is one side can't see that because, well, one side doesn't think they possibly can be. So the bottom line is this. We have a nearly $300 million or more than $300 million production budget Marvel Cinematic Universe film due out in November. No discussing film. No Vanity Fair. It's not a $130 million budget. You misquoted information from Forbes. Let me show you. The reality is Disney spent for pre-production and the first roughly 60 days of principal photography for the Marvels $130 $130 million, according to the financial returns reported by Caroline Reed, who we frequently cite here on Valiant Renegade. That means that this $130 million is probably less than half of the final spend on the film. And of course, that's if they actually shot the film all the way through one time and were happy with it. But as is the case often with Marvel Cinematic Universe films, there were tons and tons of massive reshoots for this film. I promise you the final spend on the Marvels is going to be at or very near $300 million, if not more. So what we're looking at is a complete disastrous $300 million toilet flush by the Walt Disney Company yet again on another low-rent Marvel project for a character or group of characters that nobody knows nor cares about. And no, I don't want to hear people talk about Captain Marvel from 2019. As I've said Over and over and over again, you could have filmed a dead blind monkey for two hours and put it into theaters right ahead of Avengers Endgame, told the crowd, just like with Captain Marvel, you have to see this movie before the biggest movie of all time comes out, and they would have paid a billion dollars to go see it. It doesn't matter. The first movie was bad. This one's promising to be even worse. And even the director is admitting that Kevin Feige basically controls everything. None of the individual directors that have been hired to make these Marvel films, especially in phases four and five, have had much leeway, if any, at all. Once Kevin Feige was given the keys to the kingdom, after kicking out Ike Perlmutter, who was his control, his stopgap, It has gone downhill, and all of these films, with a few exceptions, have gotten worse and worse. The box office has continued to decline. Even Nia DaCosta is effectively warning fans with her complete lack of enthusiasm in this interview with Vanity Fair. Don't go see this movie. It's not for anybody, apparently. Why would a director come out and talk about all the bad days and how hard this was and how this really wasn't her movie, but it's the movie of the studio head. Yeah, it doesn't sound like she was terribly enamored at the end of the day with the process or maybe the torture that she went through to finish this film that wasn't even hers to begin with. She was a placeholder. She's a name. She's being used probably as a black female director in Hollywood so that folks like Kevin Feige and Bob Iger can shout to the rooftops that, look, we're fulfilling our corporate requirement for DEI. If they really wanted a director like Nia DaCosta to come in and have her own voice, something that she was very clear in her interview with Vanity Fair that seemed to be taking a back seat, according to her, then they would have let her do what she needed to do with the picture. But instead, she was handed a set of paint-by-numbers instructions from Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios because, well, we're not really interested in you per se. We just want to make sure that we hit that quota that we're supposed to hit. And to all those potential would-be minority director candidates to the Walt Disney Company, make sure you understand that you're probably just a checkbox to them. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you have any intention to see the Marvels? And if you do, why? Tell me about it. I want to hear from you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.